half hour to help. I'm Dr. Dietrich. I have a great show today for you people out there with allergies because we're going to find out what the real causes of allergies are. Is it environmental? Or what about adrenal stressed allergies? Well, we're going to find out all about allergies today because we're going to be talking about it from A to Z. My guest with me on the show today is Dr. Beth McDougall. Dr. McDougall is from the San Francisco Preventive Medical Group. And Dr. McDougall attacks these particular issues from the underlying cause, not just treating the symptom. So we're going to find out a lot about allergies today. So go ahead and stay tuned. This is going to be a real exciting show today. Dr. McDougall, welcome back to the show. Thanks. Dr. Now let's Dietrich. get into allergies. Now everybody has allergies today. They, <laughs> it, it seems to be they all have allergies. <clears throat> and, I have, and I have had many patients that come in complaining about now is the season. My allergies have started acting up again. You know, it's really, and it's amazing because I was on the freeway the other day and it, and it says high pollen count today. So it's environmental. What about this? What can we do about this? these allergies. Right. If, if it's environmental and we can't control it, how do we control it in our own bodies though, if it's out there right in front of us? Well, it's a really good question because like you said, I mean these high pollen counts are out of our control unless we want to move away sure. from the Bay Area. <laughs> and who wants to do that? That's right. <laughs> um, so what I really try to do when someone comes to me with allergies is try to get at some of the underlying factors that make them pro-allergic or make them mm -hmm. prone to allergies. Okay. That's, that's interesting. Yeah. Now what about, let's talk a little bit about, there's different types of allergies the way I understand it. There's allergies to say moles, okay, mm -hmm. there's uh, say food allergies, mm -hmm. there's environmental allergies, mm -hmm. and, and say there's stress, people are under a lot of stress, they're more prone to allergies. Mm -hmm. Let's talk a little bit about, let's start with food allergies just mm -hmm. for a moment, okay? okay? Right, because like, like I was saying, you know, let's, looking at, let's look at some of the factors that underlie a person's tendency toward like allergies to the pollens that are out right now. Sure. Occasionally, if someone has undiagnosed food allergies mm -hmm. and they're eating foods unknowingly that they're allergic to every day, that revs up their immune system and their immune system starts releasing all of these kind of pro-inflammatory information molecules. Got you. And that affects their tendency to be allergic to pollens and things. Interesting. So anything that revs the immune system up, gets it kind of going, uh -huh. allows the immune system to then start start becoming sensitive to other things in the environment. So it's best to, to try to work with the things you can control, okay. and one of the things is food. Very common for people to have allergies to foods that they're unaware of. I don't know if we can actually accurately say the percentage, but I would say upwards of 35 to 45 percent of people have some one or two undiagnosed food allergies. That's quite a, that's, that's a big percentage a huge number, actually. Huge number. Now let me ask you a question. Say if somebody say comes into your particular office and your expertise, can you determine if it's a food allergies or allergic to molds or whatever? Can you, can you kind of pinpoint that or mm -hmm. is, that, is, that, is that kind of hard to do that? It is hard. I mean there's okay. no perfect test. Sure. But we do have um, technology that's improving all the time. Mm -hmm. And there's one type of blood test called an ELISA. Okay. And it is ba basically measuring antibodies in the blood. And antibodies are something that the body makes in allergy. Sure. So it's going to measure the antibodies in the blood against a panel of maybe 95 different foods. Okay. So that's one way of looking into allergies to okay. foods. The other actual, probably gold standard test is to do a modified elimination diet. Gotcha. And that's where you place someone on a diet that does not include the, the foods that are our most common allergens. So you take, okay. per, put a person on a diet that does not include dairy products, wheat, citrus, okay. eggs, and occasionally soy and corn. Okay. And for about two to three weeks, they try to eat everything but those things. Ah, okay and then gradually add the foods back in one by one about once every three days and then they take a look to see how they react to the foods. Okay, because I was going to ask you that because a lot of people say, wait a minute now, I want my eggs in the morning. You're going to take yeah. away my eggs, you're going to take away this from me, I want, I want some dairy <laughs> products. It's tough, <laughs> it's tough. So that's why, you know, occasionally, if someone's real gung-ho, we'll go that route. Sure. If not, we'll do the blood test. Oh, okay. Now as far as uh, if you do the blood test and you find out they're allergic to these particular uh, foods just by looking at the blood test. Can you determine that just by looking at a blood test? Yes. Okay. It's not 100% accurate, sure. but it's close enough. And I've, you know, occasionally someone will come up with allergies to milk, and then I'll suggest that they take 
dairy products out of their diet for a while and often they'll get better. Their body will be less prone to inflammatory conditions, their immune system settles down and they find that all of a sudden they can start tolerating these pollens. Oh, okay, interesting. Yeah. So in other words, so you can be out on the freeway and the pollen count is extremely high today, mm -hmm. but since we've eliminated some of these foods through blood testing mm -hmm. or what have you, mm -hmm. they can still say, oh, I don't care if the pollen count is this high, I'm still not going to be affected by it right. just because of the foods. Yeah, so that's that's, that's one factor. I mean, it, you know, and it doesn't work in every case, but sure. in a lot of cases, it does work. Occasionally, there's other factors. Like sometimes people are deficient in essential fatty acids, sure. and essential fatty acids govern the the information molecules I spoke about mm -hmm. that that orchestrate the immune system. So you've got pro-inflammatory information molecules and anti-inflammatory information molecules. Okay. And if you're deficient in certain essential fatty acids, you will end up having more of the pro-inflammatory inflammation molecules and they're going to rev your immune system up and you'll start being allergic to things. Interesting. So oftentimes just discovering that someone has a, a nutritional deficiency with mm -hmm. an essential fatty acid and replacing that fatty acid will make the immune system simmer down and diminish allergy symptoms. Amazing. Yeah. So just by taking some blood tests, people yeah. can be saved. I mean, just really, really, I mean, their body's just going to function so much better because you have found out the factors that are involved in these allergic right. conditions then. Right. That's incredible. Yeah. Because there's so many people I know today that are suffer from allergies and they, and they say they've been going on and they've been getting treatments and getting treatments and getting treatments or taking just prescription drugs or, or what have you, yeah. a host of things that right. I'm not even aware of exactly what they're taking, but just a host of things and they're still not getting well. And so they're also afraid when they know the pollen count is up, it just scares them because mm -hmm. I can't go out today. I'm right. going to have a miserable day today. So once you're going to get at some of the underlying factors, people feel like they have more control. Absolutely. So it's a good thing. And, and you know, unfortunately, a lot of the prescription drugs for allergies have side effects. Ah, so there, there really are not very many good ones out there you okay. know, where people can feel totally well on, a, on one of those drugs. Is there, is there something maybe that could, they could take, say, alternatively? Uh, and I know that you don't know exactly because you, don't, you haven't seen the patient, of course. But I mean, there's just some, some things that maybe can be taken naturally that can counter counteract mm -hmm. some of these particular problems? Yeah, I mean there are natural alternatives mm -hmm. to prescription or over-the-counter antihistamines. Sure. Um, there, there's an herb called stinging nettle for instance mm. and it has this kind of anti-allergy properties, some natural antihistamine properties. There is a bioflavonoid from the skin of grapefruits called okay. quercetin. Right. And mm -hmm. that, especially when taken in combination with vitamin C, can, can act on the cells that release histamine and then they can diminish the histamine response. Right. So those are actually natural antihistamines. Well, I like that natural approach because mm -hmm. it actually is really adding to the body then it's, and it's giving something to the body then. It's, giving, of, it's giving something that's non-toxic to the body exactly. if it's done correctly. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. What about, let's talk a little bit about allergics to, say, molds. You know, here a lot of people say, well, they have mold in their home. Okay. Uh, and because something in their carpet or, or mm -hmm. whatever, whatever, whatever. Right. Because it's damp out, they're, they're getting allergic reactions from a mold. What can be done about something like that? Or how can they find out if that is the underlying cause right. of the mold? Well, what seems to be very common mm -hmm. in people that have a lot of mold allergies mm -hmm. is that they have an overgrowth in their intestines of yeast. Wow. And yeast is a fungus and it's in the same family as other molds in the environment. Mm -hmm. And when you have a heavy burden of this organism in your intestines, your immune system starts making antibodies to the yeasts growing in your intestines. And then these antibodies have the ability to cross-react with the molds in the environment. Ah. So one of the ways to help people become less sensitive to molds mm -hmm. is to work on diminishing the counts of the yeast in the intestines if the yeast is overgrown. I understand. Um, it's normal to have some yeast in your intestines. Sure. But occasionally, especially because of the wide use of antibiotics in this culture mm -hmm. and high sugar, high carbohydrate mm -hmm. diets, these yeasts can kind of proliferate out of control. Gotcha. And when they, they get to a certain